I'm back at it today with another Mr. Video, and this time I'm going to take you through the setup and configuration, and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks along the way. For the past couple of weeks, I've released videos about gaming on the Mr. FPGA project. I started out with a video on the Mr.'s hardware and some of the options you have available for your own Mr. configuration. And after that, I created a video that dove into snack adapters and how those work. These videos were well received and one of the viewers left a request for a follow-up video on the Mr. Setup and Configuration process. Well, I wasn't really planning on doing this video because there's already a lot of good content out there on how to set up and configure your Mr. But I thought it might be helpful to someone to hear my own perspective and also to share a few tips and tricks that I've used that were helpful for me. But before we jump into the Mr. Setup, I wanna circle back on a couple of items from my previous videos. First, I want to talk about the availability of the DE10 Nano board. I have another Mr. project that I'll be sharing with you all over the next couple of months, so I needed another DE10 Nano board. So shortly after releasing my Mr. Hardware setup video, I went onto Mauser's website and placed an order for another DE10 Nano, which was listed as backordered. So imagine my surprise when three days later, I received a shipping notification from Mauser. Honestly, I thought this was either a mistake or they had just created the shipping label in advance. But believe it or not, a package arrived at my doorstep three days after receiving the shipping email. And I couldn't believe my eyes when I opened it up and found the DE10 Nano inside. So all that to say, they're not impossible to get. And I stand by the statement I made in my earlier video that you're better off putting in a back order with a reputable company such as Mauser or even Teresic directly instead of overpaying a scalper on eBay or somewhere else. The other thing I want to talk about is this part of my first Mr. video. Here, I said that I used the back USB port for the external hard drive. Now, one astute viewer pointed out that this port only provides power, not data. And that person was absolutely correct. I forgot that I had discovered that myself and ended up reorienting the drive to use the front USB port instead. Now you can still use the short USB cable to help minimize the mess of cables sticking out the front of your Mr. Stack. I didn't run that configuration for very long, however, because it was shortly after that when I switched over to the multi-system as my main Mr. setup. Okay, with those updates out of the way, let's talk about how to set up a fresh Mr. installation. Now we can break this process down into three parts. First, you'll need to install the Linux operating system image. And then second, you'll set up your configuration options and run the updates. And then finally, copy over your game images. Now you might be surprised to hear that the Mr. runs Linux. I mean, this is supposed to be an FPGA based system, right? I covered this a little bit in my last video. The Cyclone chip that's used by the DE10 Nano is an SOC that's embedded with both an FPGA and an 800 megahertz dual core ARM Cortex A9 processor. It's the processor portion of the chip that's going to run Linux and provide the Mr. Menu system. Once you open up a Mr. Core, control of the system is handed over to the FPGA to run the emulated system. Now, fortunately, all the work of building a Linux image was already done by the Mr. community. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go and download the Mr. Fusion image. This Linux image is completely pre-built and automated, so it makes setup a breeze. Just download the latest release from the GitHub repo, which I've linked in this video's description. For applying the image to the micro SD card, you'll need a disk imaging tool. Now there's a bunch of different options to choose from, but my preference is an open source tool called Rufus. When you download Rufus from the project's GitHub repo, grab the version that has a P as the last character in the file name. This is the portable version, which you can run without having to install anything. 
When you're in Rufus, select the micro SD card in your device list. Then click the select button and point it to the Mr. Fusion zip file that you downloaded earlier. There's no need to unzip this file. Rufus is smart enough to take that step for you. Then just click start to extract the image onto the disk. Now before you pop out the card and stick it into the mister, there's one more thing that I like to do, and that's to pre-configure the Wi-Fi network. By doing this now, you can finish the entire configuration of the mister without having to connect a USB keyboard. To do this, you need to create a file in the root of the micro SD card named WPA underscore supplicant dot conf. Inside that file, include the following text, but replace the country code with your own country and enter your own Wi-Fi network name and password. After you've done that, you can then pop the card into the mister and fire it up. You should see the Mr. Fusion setup screen, and then after about a minute or two, the Mr. menu should appear, and that will indicate that the system is ready for the next step. At this point, if the Wi-Fi configuration worked correctly, then the Mr. should be on your network. You can check and see what IP address it's using by plugging in a USB controller, pressing the B button, and then navigating left to the miscellaneous options menu. Next, you'll want to SSH into the mister to finish the configuration. Here, I'm using the OpenSSH client that's built into Windows 10 and Windows 11. When running the SSH command, specify root as the username, and the default password for the mister is simply the number one. Once you're in the mister, you can CD into the media slash fat directory, and that's the root of the micro SD card. And then from here, CD into the scripts directory and run the update.sh script. This initial update will take about 10 minutes to run, and then your mister will reboot when it's all finished. After the update script finishes, you can then SSH back into the mister and then CD back over to the scripts directory. Next, you're going to download a community update script, which contains several different options for things you can do on your mister. While in your scripts directory, run the following wget command. This will download the update underscore all script from GitHub and store a copy in the scripts folder. Then run the update underscore all dot sh script from the ssh session. After it starts up, you'll see a countdown. Press the up arrow key before this countdown ends so you can configure the update scripts configuration. You can choose whatever options you want, but I'll walk you through the settings that I like to use. Aside from keeping the default options enabled, I like to turn on the names.txt file. This will make sure any region-specific names are used in the OSD. In addition to that, I enable the BIOS database setting, and this will go grab the BIOS files for any cores that require them. I also enable the Arcade ROMs database setting. What this will do is automatically go out to archive.org and download any of the arcade ROMs that are compatible with the mister. There are also a couple of unofficial core settings that I like to include as well. For example, the arcade offsets will enable some additional patches that add some enhancements to some of the arcade games. For unofficial scripts, I like to enable first the super attract mode script, which I'll talk about more in just a few minutes. I also like to enable Wizzo's mister extensions. This will do things like add a favorites menu to your mister and give you a couple of other scripts such as the random script which will launch a random game for you. And then the last thing I'll do is install some additional wallpapers which I like to run in my menu system sometimes. Okay, so after you've set all of your update settings, you can save the file and then exit and run the update script. Okay, after your Mr. Reboots, you're then ready to start loading it up with your games. 
Now, I'm gonna walk you through this process with a couple of really great and fun homebrew games that are 100% legal for you to download and play. For loading games on your mister, you have a few different options. The most straightforward, but also the most arduous one, is to turn the mister off, take out the SD card, stick it into a computer, and copy games directly onto it. Now this is great for the initial load of a big game library, but it's a real pain to do it if you're just periodically wanting to drop games onto the mister. Your second option is to use FTP to transfer the games. The FTP server is enabled by default, so you only need an FTP client on your computer to connect to it. I personally use a tool called WinSCP, which is an open source FTP client for Windows. But the last option here is my favorite because it works out of the box with all operating systems. And that's to enable the use of SMB. Now, SMB is a Windows file sharing protocol, but it was reverse engineered many years ago and a version for Unix and Linux was created called Samba. SMB is turned off by default but you can enable it by renaming the file underscore samba.sh inside the Linux directory to just samba.sh without the underscore. After a quick reboot, you'll then be able to browse to the mister as a network share by using the standard double backslash notation as I'm showing you here on the screen. Okay, so you know how to access the mister's data remotely now, so let's talk about where the games go. In general, Games will go in the lowercase games folder in the root of the SD card. Inside that folder, there is a separate folder for each system. All you have to do is drag and drop the game's image into its corresponding folder. Let's try this out with a really fun Atari 2600 game called Amoeba Jump. Now you can download Amoeba Jump for free from the URL below. Once you download it, just copy the image file over to the Atari 7800 folder on the mister. It's as simple as that. Now, when you load up the Atari core, you can select Amoeba Jump and play it. I won't get into why the Atari 7800 core is used for playing 2600 games, but if you're curious about that, you should go check out my Atari 7800 video. So those are the basics for getting up and running on your mister. Now I want to share a few tips with you and show you a couple of other interesting things that you may want to do. The first one here is around file storage. The micro SD card may be fine for most people, but if you have a lot of game images or just game images that are larger files, then you'll eventually run out of space on the SD card. So what you can do is use an external USB drive. Any standard USB hard drive can be used, so you have a bunch of different options available. In an earlier video, I talked about how I personally use a spare NVMe drive with this SSD USB caddy. To prepare the drive, you're going to need to give it a file system and format it. I'd recommend using the XFAT file system. It's compatible with pretty much any operating system, and it isn't subject to the max file size limitations that FAT32 has. Once your USB drive is formatted, you can start copying over your games. It's important to place all your game images in the correct folder. First, you'll need to create a folder in the root of the drive called games in all lowercase. Then, inside of that folder, create subfolders for each system. You'll find a list of what the folder name for each system is supposed to be at the following URL. And once you've done that, you can just copy the game images into the folder for their corresponding system. Now, it's important to understand how Mr. finds your game image files. The USB hard drive that you plug into your mister will be mounted under one of the following directories, USB 0 through USB 5. Once it sees that there's a device there, mister uses a priority system to determine which folder is used for its list of games. And here's what the priority is. As you can see here, anything in the games folder on the USB drive is given a higher priority than the games folder on the SD card. To illustrate this, suppose you have Amoeba Jump in the games slash Atari 7800 folder on your SD card, and you have Halo 2600 in the games slash Atari 7800 folder on your USB drive. If your USB drive is plugged into the mister, 
then Halo 2600 will be the only game in the list. But if you unplug your USB drive, then the mister will only show Amoeba Jump in the list. And this is because the game system folder on the USB drive takes priority over the same folder on the SD card. Another tip for you here is if you're using USB controllers, go ahead and try enabling fast USB polling. To understand why, you may want to go back and watch the snack video I made. In short, USB controllers with slow polling rates can contribute to excessive input lag. So by enabling fast USB polling, you're locking the mister into polling USB devices at 1000 Hz, despite the rate that the device tells the mister to use. Now there's a chance that your USB controller can't support that fast of a polling rate. If that's the case, you can SSH back into the mister and remotely run the script to turn off fast polling. You'll find both the scripts for enabling it and disabling it in the scripts folder on the SD card. Okay, this last tip I wanna give you is one of my absolute favorites. If you've ever been to an arcade, you would notice that when a game isn't being played, it displays a sort of a game teaser to show you what the game is like and to try to entice you to feed it your quarters. In an arcade, this is referred to as attract mode. Well, there's a great script that adds this capability across your entire Mr. Game library, and it's called super attract mode. All you have to do is download the script and run it. And if you followed along with my setup guidance earlier in this video, then you probably already have the script installed because I had it selected as an option in the update all script. But you're not in an arcade, so why would you want this? Well, for one thing, it's just fun to have different game previews playing in the background. But another thing that I really like is it randomly shows me games that I've never seen before. And so it's a great way to get exposed to some new game options that you didn't even know existed. Now, if you see a game in super attract mode that you wanna play, all you need to do is pick up your controller, hit a button, and you're in. And don't stop here. There are so many other scripts and add-ons that you can use to enhance your experience on the mister. And if you have a tip or a trick, or a script, or some other cool thing that you do with your mister, then please, leave a comment to share it with me and anyone else watching this video. All right, I need to go see if I can beat my high score in Amoeba Jump. So, until next time, go make or play something cool. I'll see you later.